Soap destroys all germs. When you wash your hands with soap, you probably think that you're fighting with germs. But actually, soap is a surfactant. It just helps the germs come off your hands. Germs stay alive and travel through your pipes with the water. So if your purpose is to destroy germs, better use a hand sanitizer. By the way, if all of your family members are washing their hands with one bar of soap, it's not as healthy as it might seem. If your soap always stays wet, it becomes a great breeding ground for lots of harmful bacteria. So using liquid soap is a healthier option. Sharing one toothbrush is romantic. False. Don't allow anyone to use your toothbrush, even if it's your dearest significant other. The gums of the owner of the brush might be unhealthy, for example, which means that all bacteria and viruses will remain on the brush. When you share one toothbrush, all this toxic stuff travels from one mouth to another. So make sure to replace the toothbrush at least every three months and disinfect it every two weeks. Disinfection can be done in different ways – boiling, ultraviolet, cleaning with antiseptic mouthwash, or hydrogen peroxide. Leaving your toothbrush on a sink is not a big deal. (laughs) Proper storage of the toothbrush is actually a huge part of oral hygiene. The device should be dry when you're not using it. The bristles should not come into contact with sources of dirt, so it's best to use a special case for storage and keep it upright. Make sure the case is well ventilated. Enough oxygen will keep germs from accumulating on the bristles. And don't keep your toothbrush near a toilet. Do I have to tell you this? Using a shower instead of a toilet is harmless. Relieving yourself in the shower might feel like a natural habit. Some would even call it an environmentally friendly and money-saving thing to do. However, your brain might learn to associate any running water with nature's call. And every time you hear water, this connection might make you want to run to the bathroom. Of course, this may cause many uncomfortable situations in your social life. So if you notice such a reaction in yourself, you may want to break this habit, and eventually your brain will get rid of this association. All toilet papers are safe. In the Middle Ages, people used moss and leaves as toilet paper. Today, the global market solves this issue, offering a colorful variety of soft and fragrant papers. The average person uses about 57 sheets of paper every day, but hardly a lot of people question what it's made of. Studies prove that the chemicals in synthetic fragrance toilet papers may cause irritation. The majority of synthetic fragrances used for toilet papers are produced from petrochemicals, which means they may include a small number of toxic substances. But these substances may still enter through our skin and get into the bloodstream. The most environmentally friendly and healthy alternative to toilet paper is, of course, a bidet or a small shower device in the bathroom. But if you're not yet ready to give up on this good old personal hygiene product, you might want to reach out for non-bleached or recycled varieties. Wait, you say, recycled toilet paper? Well, I don't think it's that kind of recycled. Cotton swabs are made to clean ears. Nope. Although many people use cotton swabs to clean their ears, it's a practice best forgotten. While you're trying to clean earwax from the ear canal with a cotton swab, you risk damaging your inner ear and even cause partial hearing loss. It's better to avoid using them inside your ears at all. The healthy alternative is to wash your ears while taking a shower or to use a tissue soaked in soapy water. Using one toilet seat for decades is fine. Wow, decades, huh? That's one mighty go! Hey, just kidding. The average toilet seat usually lasts for about 5 years, so ideally, you should replace it at least every 5 or 7 years. Plastic seats tend to be lighter and have a longer lifespan compared to wooden seats. But many people consider wooden seats as a stylish accessory to decorate the bathroom. If you use the wooden one, make sure to keep it clean and don't slam the seat. Some people take bathroom decoration to the next level and purchase fabric covers to make the commode look like a royal throne. Although studies didn't prove that cloth toilet seat promotes illnesses or transmit any infections, it's still a good idea to wash it regularly. By the way, the lifespan of porcelain toilets varies from 15 to 30 years. They may continue to work after this period, but they will be at a higher risk of numerous clogs, leaking, and other repair issues. It would be wise to get ahead of the problem and replace the toilet if its age is above 20 years. Washing hands is unnecessary. Huh. Only 1 in 20 people washes their hands properly after using the toilet. And 95% of them don't do it correctly. 
Meanwhile, this simple action is one of the most important steps to prevent the spreading of harmful bacteria. However, we're usually in a rush when it comes to washing hands after the toilet, so we don't actually get rid of all the nasty stuff on our fingers. Ideally, people are supposed to scrub their hands for at least 20 seconds. Another piece of advice is to stay away from the toilet door handles until your hands are clean. If you touch the door handle with dirty hands, don't forget to clean it with antiseptic. Ew. Cleaning the bathroom once a year is okay. You believe that? Well, that sound you hear is the siren of the bathroom police coming to arrest you. Okay, maybe not you. The bathroom is one of the most used rooms in our home, but it's also home for lots and lots of germs. E. coli bacteria can be found all over the bathtub and the sink if they're not washed properly. Experts recommend cleaning the bathtub, shower, toilet, and sink at least once a week. And don't forget to use rubber gloves, a scrub sponge, and toilet cleaner. If you don't want to use expensive chemicals, vinegar and baking soda do a great job of cleaning and disinfecting too. Air fresheners make the air cleaner. Lemons, pomegranates, and cloves were used as the first natural toilet fresheners. Today, whether you want your toilet to smell like a sea breeze, lavender field, or a cherry blossom, you'll see plenty of choices on the shelves of supermarkets to satisfy your tastes. But over the past decade, scientists have been studying the effects of household chemicals on people's health and found that not all common air fresheners are actually safe for your health. A small content of toxic ingredients may cause a negative impact even if it's not immediately obvious. That's why it's recommended to ventilate your bathroom if you spray fragrances there. To clear your lungs after using an air freshener, you may want to take a brief walk outdoors or open a window and let the fresh air in. Experts recommend using natural ways to freshen up your home, like brewing aromatic herbs or purchasing a special diffuser that can efficiently remove the bad odor circulating in the air. And of course, the easiest way is to ventilate the bathroom regularly. Deodorant can be shared by several people. The seemingly harmless roll-on deodorant can put you at the risk of many skin problems when shared. Some deodorants destroy the odor-causing bacteria, so their antibacterial ingredients can provide some protection. But if you use organic deodorant, be careful. They just mask the smell and don't contain any powerful antibacterial ingredients. If you're using a roll-on antiperspirant, it's even worse because they don't destroy germs at all. So if you like to share a deodorant with your loved one, it would be wise to switch to spray. Leaving the toilet lid open is not a big deal. Uh -huh. Apart from it being unethical not to close the lid when you've done your business, it can also be pretty harmful. You don't see it, but when you flush the toilet with the lid open, small droplets of water spray out of the bowl, covering everything in a 3 feet diameter. And that water isn't exactly clean, you know. The dirty droplets end up on you standing there too, so when you flush, you also get an unwanted shower. The proper way to do it is to put down the seat, close the lid, and only then push the button. Now, seriously, you are so lucky to have access to a normal toilet. According to a report by the United Nations, around 60% of the world population, or 4.5 billion people, either have no toilet at home or one that is not safe enough. That's something we should work on. Oh, by the way, in 2013, toilets received their special date. World Toilet Day is now celebrated every year on November 19th. What will you do to celebrate?